Hello! Today I'm returning to some game design discussion with a look at open world design versus linear leveled game worlds, particularly within the realms of the RPG. Now, this topic has emerged out of some recent discussions around Final Fantasy XVI and the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and actually prompted more so because I'm playing back through Final Fantasy XV at the moment, um, and just now beginning to appreciate the balance between compartmentalising the narrative experience with the opportunities to roam free. And I suppose it's interesting to consider the appetite for this and, and why the application of open world design versus leveled environments variously contribute uh, to different game experiences. Now, kicking off, uh, something that's interested me over the years is how open world design has morphed into a marketing tactic and a selling point for new titles. And it's not uncommon for AAA titles such as Grand Theft Auto, Elder Scrolls and Assassin's Creed to get promoted at least in part by boasting the scale of the map, uh, the scope of the world, and what can be explored within that. But rather than being a necessity for modern games, or indeed an overtly positive thing, I think there is much more consideration and nuance to have around the use case for an open world, and why and when this is opportune to use over a linear, levelled or contained environment design, or indeed what even constitutes an open world to begin with, which I think is the initial question. So I'm going to frame this conversation slightly around Final Fantasy, as it has historically been a talking point around this series and on this channel, but there's several other examples to draw on where necessary, um, and I think once we get to the heart of this thing, I'll draw some of those in. And kicking off, I think looking back through earlier Final Fantasy games, they've often perhaps misappropriately been termed as open world titles, or at least considered to have open world elements. And I've previously partitioned the mechanics of the games loosely into categories of action, exploration and exposition, with the exploration element being delivered largely through the UI of the traditional world map, um, or the overworld screen, but really looking to the function of the overworld uh, across the Final Fantasy and, and other JRPG titles, we have to question to what extent we can really call this an open world, because generally speaking, once you gain access to this environment, you are contained by geography and topography, or some circumstance, such as the broken drawbridge way back in Final Fantasy 1, which restricts your movement and, and prevents you from accessing most locations or features of the overworld. And Final Fantasy VIII, for example, sees you begin contained on Balam Island, with only the garden, the fire cavern, and Balam town available to you. And Final Fantasy VII, likewise, you escape Midgar, and then you have Chocobo Bill, the village of Calm, or the Mithril Mine available to you. And I've previously termed this technique uh, the illusion of scope uh, offered within traditional JRPGs, because they give an aesthetic sense of expanse and scale without actually being entirely free-roaming experiences, at least until much later in the game episodes, where the increasingly liberating modes of transport permit players to venture around the world, with the Ragnarok and the High Wind uh, spacecraft or airships uh, being examples in, in those aforementioned games. And this staggering of map progression and, and player freedom is something that we do see elsewhere, uh, with another classic example being the Grand Theft Auto games, which traditionally have interconnecting bridges between different locations that become fixed and accessible as the game wears on and we progress through the story. And so we could reasonably consider this uh, as linear level design rather than an entirely open world, and that extends to the larger scale titles such as Final Fantasy XII, Final Fantasy XV, which likewise have a one-to-one -one ratio of avatar to world, but nonetheless maintain certain limitations with regards to access of environments. Turning by comparison to titles like the Elder Scrolls games uh, Witcher 3 and the later Assassin's Creed games, we have what many would consider to be fully open world, and what a lot of Final Fantasy fans have advocated for when discussing Final Fantasy 16, the 7 remake, and so on, and these titles are generally dictated by player agency and freedom to roam uh, from the outset of the game. There's no northern crater or end of the world or looming progression that must be gradually worked towards and unlocked in the final stanza. Or if there is, it is very strategically nested uh, in an otherwise open map, such as Sovngarde at the end of Elder Scrolls Skyrim uh, being a good example. Now, the point and purpose of these approaches to game design are numerous, uh, but for me, 
and particularly within the realms of the RPG, it comes down to storytelling. And indeed, who is dictating the story and propelling it forwards? Is it the player, or is it the game writers? For example, much like early tabletop RPGs, the Elder Scrolls series as a free-roaming sandbox of multiple questlines, character classes, and avenues to explore is largely governed by the player's pace and the player's preferences, and such is the vagueness of the hero character. It's very much left to the player to determine their aims and intentions and their role in the world and how they wish to explore, with the primary questline largely serving as a means to finish the game uh, more than anything else. Turning to JRPGs and Final Fantasy titles as our case study, they tend to funnel the player through events with the pace being dictated by the game writers and the story unfolding according to them. And while this may lead some fans or players to question why there's a world map at all, I think it serves an important function in terms of world building, and as mentioned, this illusion of scope by offering controlled deviations from the central story into specific side quests, such as Chocobo Bill in Final Fantasy VII as a primary example. The overworld also serves as an opportunity to grind some battles uh, in order to get experience and level up your characters before the next narrative scenario. So generally speaking, Final Fantasy games and most narrative-driven JRPGs worth their salt are structured in service of the story, and while the player is offered some degree of freedom in these explorative reprieves, rarely is it done so liberally uh, as to deviate them from the next segment of story, and it's no accident that the largest opportunity for freedom and exploration usually comes when obtaining the final airship uh, right towards the end of the game, in, in Final Fantasy specifically, because at this juncture in the game, there's essentially no story left to tell. Uh, all of the key elements of narrative have been told, the pacing has been done, and all that's left is for the player to complete outstanding side quests if they wish, uh, level their characters, so that they are adequately prepared uh, to finish the game. So there is very limited issues in diverging from the core story at this juncture. And as I say, this staggered unlocking of areas until the final act are design patterns that we see in other popular titles, such as GTA, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, and so on. Now, there's been a curious overlap between the liberating free roam of Elder Scrolls-style games and the narrative-driven adventures of Final Fantasy games, which come in the form of titles such as Witcher 3, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, or Odyssey, and for example, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. And I find this interesting because while these are critically acclaimed titles, there's also been, conversely, uh, and almost paradoxically, a vocal dismissiveness from certain players uh, about the scale and scope uh, of the titles, and how this impacts upon the succinctness of the story. And I have to stress that this is subjective. These are conversations I've been a part of and that I've heard, and I do enjoy the titles, all of which uh, that I've discussed. I have found an interesting correlation between people who have played, for example, Witcher 3 or Red Dead Redemption 2 or Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and yet after the novelty of exploration and riding around and sinking ships or slaying monsters has occurred, many lost the coherence and the thread of the central story. And I was surprised to find how many of these people uh, haven't completed any of these games. You know, they haven't completed the main quest of these titles. And I think this owes somewhat to the immediate expanse and the immediate free roam potential of these titles, along with the almost limitless potential for side quests and so on, which dilutes the incentive and the desire to contend with the central story, and thus the narrative coherence of the piece becomes somewhat unravelled. So... Looping this back around to Final Fantasy and the discussions and debates around open world versus the more linear, contained environments that I believe are confirmed for Final Fantasy XVI and what we saw in Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, the Midgar segment, I think for retaining pace and crafting and controlling the telling of a story to the player, the illusion of Expanse is perhaps favourable to the wide-open, free-roaming sort of stuff that, that fans are clamouring for and the sort of thing that we see in Elder Scrolls or Witcher. And indeed, looking back to Final Fantasy IX, and more specifically Final Fantasy X, which are among those regarded as having some of the best stories in the Final Fantasy series, I think it's notable how linear, by comparison, they, these are to other Final Fantasy games. With Final Fantasy IX's world map not permitting players to fly freely around in vehicles, uh, aside from chocobos, and Final Fantasy X doing away with the world map entirely, in favour of contained linear segments and pathways to progress back and forth 
uh, in the game world with. So in all, uh, I would say for story-driven titles and competently told JRPGs, there should be a balance struck, uh, and I think there should be an avoidance of too much linearity and funneling of players through generic tunnels and pathways, which was a huge criticism of Final Fantasy XIII, for example. And I would argue that Final Fantasy VII Remake, Part One at least, was also quite prescriptive in how much it prevented players from progressing back and forth within Midgar. And while I'm conscious it is attempting to tell this well-paced, very concise story, uh, the ability to go back and forth uh, retaining this illusion uh, of, of freedom within Midgar, instead of having these big signs popping up preventing you from going, uh, you know, that was a very outmoded style of of game design, I think, and particularly for a, a title so re well renowned for its explorable nature. I think Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 went a bit too linear and constrained uh, with how it delivered on that. As for open world titles, I think they are most befitting, but not exclusively so, uh, of games that subscribe to player determinism um, and ambiguous, loosely structured plots, with prime examples at their very best being the aforementioned Elder Scrolls, um, Elden Ring, which permitted huge amounts of explorability around a highly vague and interpretable story, and other titles along these lines, with exceptions being Red Dead Redemption 2, I think, which I thought was beautifully written um, despite its slow burn pace, but I think that was maintained by progression and upgrades being achieved and unlockables being achieved as you progress through through the mainline story. So a short discussion, just uh, an overview of, of how these different mechanics and uh, of, of environment design and, and open world design sort of deliver and, and in impact on a game experience and a game story. So if you got this far, thanks very much for listening. Uh, I'd love to hear your views on how you think about linear design versus open world design, uh, particularly when it comes to action RPGs or JRPGs and that sort of thing. And if you enjoyed the episode, uh, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing to keep you updated with my latest posts.